Welcome to episode three of Pardon My French, a abbreviated version of the French technique that I teach in my academy here in Atlanta. I want to say happy Monday to everybody. I hope you've enjoyed all the incredible education that has been fulfilling our living rooms recently. And I hope you are enjoying these mini series of Pardon My French and learning the French way the right way. Uh, we've had a wonderful last two days. Our first couple of days uh, encompassed the difference of French cutting versus British cutting, as well as learning hand position, cone position, scissor position, elbow position, feet position, and body position. Learning how to stand the client up. We had a wonderful question about how to work with our guest and standing that client up. I know there's a lot of facets that go into French cutting and I've had a lot of really great questions in the process, uh, but I hope that uh, we can sort of do a little recap on today as to what it is that I'm going to teach. I've got a lot in store for you this morning, but it's really my goal to keep these series very short and sweet. We have a lot of great education out there. We're busy, we're at home with our children, we are doing lots of other things as well. So uh, it's my goal to be very short and sweet and get to the point. I had a wonderful conversation yesterday with my buddy Sam Villa talking about how we brought this digital world from our, basically from our living rooms to yours. And both of us agreed that even though this digital education is wonderful, Cosmetology school is not learned on YouTube, and neither is perfecting the French technique or any technique out there that you're learning. When this all is over, we're gonna to have to get back into those classrooms with that hands-on education and that educator-student uh, touch point. Why? Because French cutting to me is an emotion, and it's very difficult for me to teach you this emotion by summing it up in little parts, especially on a mannequin head. Um, you're not able to see what a client's true bone structure is. You're not able to see exactly what her lifestyle is, maybe her normal texture of hair. How would I deal with a cowlick? How would I deal with um, uh, someone who has uh, dry hair or frizzy hair or maybe a bad color? All of those things are the types of things that we learn when we come to our academies and obviously through hands-on education. So I thought that was a really great conversation and I appreciate my buddy Sam for saying just that because it is true. Uh, we had a wonderful question that came from Rob Dunn in Canada, uh, one of my great students up in Canada, one of my Sunlights users and, and a wonderful guy. And that question was, if we go back from this pandemic and we are not gonna blow dry hair immediately, uh, for reasons I discussed in my first episode of maybe cutting down on time, uh, maybe it's potentially uh, going to be spreading things, um, but at the end of the day, how are we gonna texturize our haircuts if we are asked to not blow it dry? And the answer to that, Rob, is my greatest mentor was a man by the name of Yosh Toya. And Yosh Toya taught me that every single haircut he did prior to doing it wet, he always pre-cut it dry. So possibly what you might be doing is reaching out to your guests the night before, if you know that they have long hair and you wanna cut it, dry cut it with a clipper, or you wanna dry cut your layers in, um, you might ask them to come with their hair clean. But in the event that they don't come with their hair clean, in the event that they do come with a ponytail, it takes nothing to take the ponytail out, take two seconds to flat iron that hair, go over through your debulking of, of your haircut and your layers. You're smart enough to know where the hair lives and where the weight of that hair lives, especially if you learn this French cutting technique. And then you can certainly shampoo and do your wet cut to refine your skills afterwards. So keep those questions coming. It's wonderful to hear from you and it's wonderful for you to reach out. This is why I'm loving these watch parties. It gives me an opportunity to talk directly to you and to help you as your teacher here in the classroom. Also, I want to congratulate our lucky winner today. You guys have been doing a wonderful job posting hashtag French cut with candy, making sure that you take a selfie, having some creative pictures of you watching me, uh, making sure to post that on your feed in your Instagram and tagging at Sunlight's Balayage. You've done a wonderful job of doing so. 
And today, our lucky winner is Karen Dickinson. Yay, Karen! Now, Karen, I took the liberty of wanting to give you a wonderful candy shawl texturizing shear. And I want to tell you a little story about Karen. Uh, I want to say that Karen used to work for me a very long time ago, probably close to 20 years ago. And that's not why she won today. She won today because she had the cutest thing about her cat saying, how in the world am I going to hold my shear without a thumb? And I thought that was so cute, so creative, and so unique. But I do want to say, Karen, I really admire the fact that there is really a right way to leave when you leave an organization. And we have been friends for 20 years after you've left my salon. And in my opinion, that's really the way that it should be. But just in case your cat wanted to know uh, how to hold the shear correctly, I do want to bring up a few things about my ice-tempered bent shank seven inch or six and a half inch shear. One thing that I would tell you is that you can pop out these wonderful little rubbers uh, in that shear, and you can see the shear here. Pardon my nails, I'm really bad right now, needing a nail job. But what it does is it enables me to hold that shear all the way down to the base of my finger and allowing me to saw that hair. And that's so important to be able to saw when you're cutting. So when you see me teaching reverse exterior today, you're gonna understand a lot about how I saw and not about how I hold a shear and cut like this. Um, this shear is very affordable. All of my shears are under $200. And as you know, there's a coupon code, pardon my French, right now with 30% off of all of my cutting tools. But this shear should fit completely in your hand covering the total circumference. So if you're at home wondering what size you need to order, just maybe measure your hand and see if you feel like a seven inch shear or a six and a half inch shear will fit nicely in that process. So congratulations, Karen. I really wish you well and um, happy French cutting. Okay, so a couple of things that uh, we wanna go over today, let's get started, is that I wanna to talk to you and recap quickly about the angles in which we had spoken about earlier. One, of course, is my measure mesh angle, which is straight, square, section by section. It might be to you a zero degrees in your uh, normal uh, British type of cutting method. It means that everything is very straight, very square, my feet, my hands. Remember the palm of the hand always faces the scalp. We do not cut inside of the hand unless we're cutting a basic outline. Interior is where that length is at the top and we cut from short to long. Our hand comes around the head, that elbow goes up, that knee goes out, and we cut more like this. Of course, we are cutting from short to long, which is vastly different than how you cut the British technique, which is more palm to palm. Exterior. Exterior, I said before, is exiting the head. It's where your length is living at the bottom, and we are going to cut from long to short. Now, uh, before we get started, I wanted to show you an exterior haircut and kind of give you some semblance as to what, and let me lower her down so you can see her into the camera, as to why those layers live lower in the hair. And we talked about dividing the side of the head up in two different ways when you have a different type of part. But for exterior, those layers are always going to live low in the hair. And so I hope you can sort of see that well as to how I hold that angle and I'm making sure that my layers live closer to the bottom. Exterior would be length at the bottom and I would cut from long to short. So how I would actually hold this would be up and out. And let me drop her down a little so you can see my hands. And I'm actually gonna demonstrate this on a, a mannequin in just a moment. But just so that you can kind of get a, a better sense and idea of what I'm talking about here as I hold my comb and my shear in the hand together, I'm going to take that section and I'm going to make sure that I'm cutting from the outside to the inside. And I believe you couldn't see that either. She's got long hair, I apologize for that. Let me lower her down just a little bit more. Like I said, we're learning as we grow here. Um, and so for me, what I would be doing is I would be holding that hair up 
out and away. So when those layers fall in my haircut, they're gonna fall nice and low and around. And so that's gonna give me that wonderful texture and that seamlessness. Now that guide is gonna come from how I frame the face. So based on my framing on the face is exactly how my exterior layers are going to live. Um, and what I love about exterior is it gives a lot of air to the hair, but in many cases, especially now that we have a lot of lobs and, uh, and trend, uh, it can actually just let me round the corner off in a lob so that I just get a nice straight vertical line with just a little layering at the bottom. So that would be more of my exterior look. Now reverse exterior, as I said to you today, I'm going to teach you my very favorite angle uh, and I think what really kind of got me to this angle, if you will, was that reverse exterior is about reversing the body. And, and how I kind of came up with this is that if you remember back maybe of several years ago, you would see a lot of celebrities out there that were putting extensions in their hair. And they would have short haircuts on top of this long hair. And they would bring you these pictures in for consultations and they would say to you, how come I can't get that type of layering in my hair? You and I both know that if you try to layer a hair with exterior, very, uh, uh, very much like I just showed you, most of those layers would live lower in the hair. And what happens in that case is that you weaken the bottom and the girth of your haircut. And so it, it came to me like, how is it that I'm going to take my layers that live low and actually move them up on the hair so that they can live high in my haircut without taking the strength of my length away? Because obviously you and I both know that all of our clients don't wear extensions in their hair, but they do want the looks of those types of Victoria's Secret haircuts. So let me pull over this Ex reverse exterior and show you a bit about how those layers do live higher into the hair. And again, I'm going to demonstrate this in just a moment, but where those layers are going to live higher on the hair, and of course I don't have a mirror, so you guys are my mirror. Give me some love if I'm doing okay here. But basically what I'm trying to create, as I always say, in a in a exterior layer, things work from north to south, meaning that a lot of what we have in the uh, air in our hair is down low. So when you are getting a shape, you are working from north to south with exterior. With reverse exterior, you're actually creating east to west. So what I'm trying to create in this hair is more of an east to west type of look. So when I am getting that eye line, cheek line balance, it's allowing me to lift those layers up higher and still keep the girth of my haircut closer to the bottom without over layering the hair. We all as hairdressers know that there's many times that we over layer something and when we do, Unfortunately, what ends up happening is we have to go back and cut another inch off the bottom to make it work, correct? So I'm gonna teach you how to get these east to west layers without removing the length at the bottom. Also, before I teach you that, I'm gonna show you a bit of sectioning. So stay right there. Let's talk sectioning. So I've taken my mannequin, Colette here. I told you guys that this is $23 right now on our website to help you in the classroom as you're practicing balayage and some French cutting. But I went ahead and I sectioned her off and I wanna talk through this sectioning so that you can sort of understand uh, what we do here. And I will show you more of her in just a moment. But first, let's just start with the top of the head here. So on the top of the head, we work from the hairline to the crown area and we take four sections perpendicular to the scalp using either our mesh angle, our exterior angle, our reverse exterior angle, or our high interior angle. We'll use three to four sections based on the width of the head. 
When we go to part our guest off prior to our haircut, we will do a top of the ear section for the back. That is for all long haircuts that are sectioned from the top of the ear for the preparation of your haircut. Or we'll do one to two fingers behind the ear based on preparation for short haircuts. So what I did on my mannequin here to explain that to you is here would be my four sections on the top, that much hair. It's at three quarters of the eyebrow going into the crown area. That is considered my top from here to here. On this side of the head, I parted off for your long haircut. And let me move in a little closer and make sure you can see that. And I'm right at the top of the ear, this being my side, this being my AB area, which I'm gonna talk about next. This is the parietal ridge. But on this side of my mannequin, what I've shown you is that I've parted off one finger behind the ear. So that when I'm laying a bob line in or a short haircut, I'll actually have a guide that goes behind the ear in order to, to uh, connect with my short hair in the back as well as a bob line. So again, to recap, for long hair, I would be parting from top of the head to the top of the ear, bringing this all back. For short hair, I would be parting one finger or two fingers behind the ear in order to create my basic outline there. Again, this is my AB area, which I'm gonna talk about, which is the parietal ridge. I apologize, I only had some bobby pins that I dug out of my daughter's, um, my daughter's makeup bag. But nonetheless, uh, showing you also the top of the head is allowing you to see the four sections on the top. Now, as we move on, I always think about French hair cutting like a clock. 12 o'clock would be the top, six o'clock would be the bottom, three o'clock would be the right side, nine o'clock would be the left side. And in between 12 and three, we have the parietal ridge. That is AB. That is the area that falls from my layering here. And let me just make sure you can see this. That area that would fall from here over. So what I do in the middle of this is really up to me. And this is really the deciding factor in what I think makes uh, a great lesson in French hair cutting is that far too often when we cut hair, we pull hair straight up, straight out, straight over, regardless of what angle we use. And when we do things like that, what ends up happening is we create these question mark haircuts that causes the hair to come into the head like gravity, which we talked about before, and then maybe flipping out at the bottom. So I have to make a decision in between here as to whether or not I'm going to build, remove, leave, and just extend, or cut a shag. And so this area here is the most important part of my haircut. And for me, that parietal ridge is the difference between good and great. All right, so now on the side, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of cutting this haircut into two parts, subdividing a mesh angle on the flat of the head, working into an interior angle at the bottom. So the type of haircut this may be, if you were trying to think in your mind what would this look like, it would have short pushing long on the top, it would fall out, mesh, which removes the most amount of hair, would cause it to be a bit more square, and then interior would cause that hair to come in. So this would be a beautiful layered bob with squareness that came in based on my basic outline if indeed that was what I was cutting here. Now on the side, you'll see that typically we only use three sections. Now once you get fast, once you're using a larger shear, and this is why I keep saying that it's so important to realize that French cutting is so fast, and I'm gonna be really happy to share with you two videos this week that are three minutes long, that one is a five minute pixie and the other is a one bisque bob haircut, which is one of the hardest things to cut in French cutting. And I'm gonna share those videos that I had 
taped prior to uh, COVID-19 and I want to share those with you because I really want you to see the efficiencies of how fast this dance is in French cutting. But nonetheless, uh, that is how we section the hair. Three quarter of the eyebrow, the implantations, which are the sideburns at the side, uh, implantation in the front of the pots, which is the sideburn at the side. Four sections across the top, as you can see here, three sections across the side. Now, when we move into the back of the hair, you'll see that I went ahead and I divided this into four different quadrants. Now, for the interest of my showing you, I never clip the hair off like this. I want to make sure you understand. This is not how I clip and section the hair off. It's simply to show you how my hand moves around the head. So for here, I'm going to have four sections that work across in the crown, the crown area here. I'm going to have six sections that work across the back. And for the interest of showing, it would be one, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three, three, two, one. Now, if you have a small hand, I have a man hand, so it's very easy for me to cut the whole back of the head in about 12 sections, which like I said, is gonna, I'm gonna show you in these videos coming up. It allows you to move with the shape of the head. Uh, these six sections across the back, um, as long as you're perpendicular, as long as you have the right hand position, the right body position, again, scissor position, and making sure that that hand is always facing the scalp. That's the hardest part. Now, in my academy in Atlanta, I also talk about levels of layering. And you may have noticed that I put some of my notes up after my last two episodes, and I promise to put up again these notes as well, uh, just to kind of keep you building on your arsenal of how this whole French haircut builds up. Um, it was interesting because I've been watching a lot of online education, and I know that there's some incredible artists out there that are teaching some amazing things. But for me, I live my life in KISS. And that stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. Because at the end of the day, some of the haircuts that require 45, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to cut is not really what your guest is always needing and appreciating. Because mostly now, Hair just needs to fall on the gravity in the shape of the head, and we all know that. Um, and what's going to be interesting is how I'm going to drive all of my points back together. And on Friday, I'm going to do something that I think is going to definitely be a mic drop, mind blown moment. That you realize that it's simply that hand and body position, the gravity that causes your shape. Now. And just want to make sure that I have a disclaimer there. I personally love the education going on. But what I do know is in order for me to make money and for me to get behind the chair and to put the time value on what it is that I can charge, I think it's important to know strategies that you can use as a hair cutter that can get you from A to Z quicker. So now, let me show you how to do a reverse exterior. First, I want to talk to you about the basic outline and the framing on the face. So every woman has a V on her face just like this. If you look at my face, you can see that. The size of the V on her face is truly going to mimic the size of the bang area. When you struggle sometimes to figure out how wide to go with your bangs, if you just comb this hair down and you push it up, it should naturally give you that amount of hair. Now, when I'm cutting a basic outline in French, we talked about facing our guests. So I'm gonna to try to turn my guests this way for the camera and see if we can make sure that I, I show you this. One thing that I don't do when I'm outlining the hair is I don't actually comb this hair down and swing. That's the natural thing that a lot of folks do is they try to swing when they're framing. My goal with these east to west type of haircuts is that I wanna be more straight up and down. So my pitch is not open this way, my pitch is more up and down this way. 
So as I do that, make sure that you can see me. As I'm doing that pitch around the face, as I hold that hair in my hand and I take the large shear, I don't do this. That is not what I'm doing. Basically what I'm doing is I'm using the shear to drive that outline straight up and down. So as I cut over my finger, I'm going to be straight up and down with that outline, making sure that I follow naturally the gravity of how that hair falls. So that when my outline is done, it's more up and down versus taking this corner off, which is very important, especially when women have uh, broken hair there from flat ironing or over curling. We want to leave as much of this hair here as we can to create some of these looks. Now on this side of the hair, again, I don't want to go like this. I don't want to go like this. I basically want to hold that hair as straight down as possible. I can even take my comb and lay my comb down and let my comb be my ruler. The ruler to actually cut that outline, that ruler will help me going all the way down with that hair, straight down. Now, if I choose to have to get my hand this way, it's really better to take my hand this way. So if I was going to cut this, I would just cut straight up and down. That way I could mimic both sides. And why that's so important is because most of you out there struggle with balancing both sides of your framing. One side gets cut too deep, one side has too much hair, then after we blow it dry, we go back in and we try to correct it. But most of that is your hand and your scissor and your body position in doing so. So to recap, if I'm gonna go straight up and down on the V on the face here, then doesn't it make sense for me to go straight up and down on the V on the face here? So all I have to do is change my body position with that. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on refining my outline today because the goal is just to show you why uh, exterior is, uh, excuse me, reverse exterior is so different than regular exterior. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you a regular exterior and where that hair falls. And so I always try to work with my guests to my belly. I think I told you that on episode one. It's important to get her to a level that you can feel comfortable in. And just to let you know, if your chair doesn't even go down far enough and your guest is still high, there are times that I ask my guest to just scoop down in the chair so that she is right where she needs to be, ensuring that I have even tension around my haircut each time. Now, we said that when we start our sectioning in our first four sections of hair, we're gonna stand on the right, which is me, you, remember that? I'm gonna be facing exactly what I'm cutting to cut exterior. And each time I take a section, I'm going to be taking my feet and stepping with each section. So if this was four sections of exterior, it would be one, two, three, four. When I would get to the crown, I would turn my body and I would face what I'm going to cut in the crown of the hair right here. And I would be one, two, three, and four. When I got to this side of the head, I would step in front of what I'm going to cut. I would turn the head closer to me so that I'm still square to what I'm cutting. And I would cut one, two, three, Four. It's impossible for me to stand here and cut exterior and stand here and cut exterior. Why? Because I would be cutting from long to short on the right side and from short to long on the left side. So it's important that I come from one, two, three, and turn the head. That way my body stays within the same parameter each time. So it's like a dance. I start on the right, I work to the left. I start on the right, I work to the left. Now, when you get more advanced in French cutting, you can start on the right, work to the left, start on the left, work to the right. You'll see that in my videos coming up. And the reason for that is once you have 
taught your body the proper position, hand position, scissor position, cone position, and feet position, and elbow position, you will maintain that same level as you're moving. I laugh a lot in my classroom sometimes. I say it's like a sprinkler head. It's right? And every time that that head moves, so does your guest. So if I'm cutting an exterior angle, I would be combing this hair back. I would be grabbing my guide in the top. I would be cutting from long to short. I would be taking a guide from both sides of my part. So because I'm right-handed, I would take my fingers, both sides of the part, stand behind it on the left side, and I would pinch down two fingers width into the crown. And the purpose of this two fingers width, and I'm gonna to try to show it to you. This is a little harder to show. I wore a white jacket today just so that you could see this dark hair on me. So my fingers are two fingers width, two fingers depth. So I don't go any further than if I lay my hand that two fingers depth. That's so important. A lot of times people want to bring the whole basic outline up. And if I was cutting an exterior angle here, what I would do is I would take that section and I would hold my scissor and my comb in the hair. Let me just grab a little water here. She's gotten a little dry waiting on me to cut her. And basically what I would do is I would bring this section up and I would create my guide for the entire haircut. So I would pull this straight up perpendicular from the scalp and I would saw long to short. And as I go, I would still just be staying straight up on the head, making sure that my hand is facing the scalp that my hand is not open and twisted like that. So if my hand is open and twisted towards me, then I'm going to not get an even haircut. So once I drop that guide back and down, I'm actually going to reestablish my part. And when I reestablish my part, now I'm gonna have a guide on both sides of my part that are gonna help me with the haircut. In episode two, I showed you how you could cut an exterior on one side and a high interior on the other side using that guide so that you had the same amount of layering going down. But what makes reverse exterior so different is if I hold an exterior angle here, and again, I'm just at three quarter of the eyebrow and I'm combing that hair up. And if I'm holding that exterior angle, Basically what I'm doing is I'm able to cut from long to short and where that hair falls, as we showed just a moment ago in my mannequin, is down low. My body position would be here, I would continue, I would continue, I would continue, I would turn, I would continue and continue and continue, I would turn and continue and continue and continue, and that would be cutting all exterior. So what is reverse exterior? If I need to make this have east to west, instead of north to south, then I would take my body and I would actually stand in front of what I was cutting so that my hand position would go up. And for the purposes of the camera, I'm actually just gonna turn my guest so that you can see me standing in front of what I'm cutting. And I'm gonna tilt her head back slightly just so you can see. And now I'm going to take my section and I am going to pull that hair straight up and down like so. And I'm going to come from underneath and I'm going to go straight up with that angle. And what that has done is that has allowed me, you can see the extra corner that I've taken off there, that's allowed me to get my layers up higher. So let me do one more. So as I'm combing this, I'm gonna come straight up and down with my finger. And unlike an exterior, if you will, an exterior, I'm not able to do that. My body and my hand would have to hit the hair in order to do that, causing me to over-direct the hair if I was trying to do that. 
But if I stand in front of that section and I bring that section straight up and down, I can either cut it in my finger or below my finger. A lot of times I'll rest my comb, which is eight inches, my scissor, which is seven inches, and I'll come straight underneath and go straight up and down. Again, four sections coming around, straight up. I would have comb, scissor, connect. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to ruffle those feathers and continue to add lots of wonderful layering in the hair without over layering the bottom. And this, my friends, is really one of my favorite things to do on hair. Why? Because this isn't just about cutting hair long like this. This isn't just about getting this type of hairstyle, which allows you to have those short layers. It's also something that I use in bobs and other haircuts that allow you to get that look, um, to get something to sit down. So I use reverse exterior and short hair, men's hair, bobs, shags, long hair, but basically what it's doing is by reversing my body around, it's allowing me to cut straight up and down, ruffling the feather higher in the haircut, and allowing the rest of that hair to fall and still have girth at the bottom. So it's a very, very amazing angle that can help you get different looks and different styles in each haircut. And um, I've enjoyed very much allowing you to see what a reverse exterior is. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk a little deeper about combing. I'm gonna show you some combing exercises and how to uh, uh, put the rhythm to the dance of French cutting. I uh, wanna talk more also about interior. That's gonna be our class for tomorrow. I truly have enjoyed you tuning in to Pardon My French.